My fellow members of Blue Key annually select a member of the CSC faculty to provide a greeting for Ivy Day. Dr. Timothy Donahue, professor of business, was the individual asked to speak this evening. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Donahue. Good evening. I want to first congratulate this year's Ivy Day recipients. You have done honor to yourself and Shattern State College. When I was asked to give the faculty a uh, greeting for Ivy Day, it felt strange. I never went to college in a traditional manner. It took me nine years to get my BA, two years to get my MBA, and then after nine years working, another five years to get my doctorate. All my education was done at night while working full time with the family. I never attended day classes, did not participate in college campus activities, and I guarantee you I certainly never won an award for academics. Um, <laughs> what I want to share is the concept that opportunity usually comes at times when you least expect it. And it always seems to arrive at the back door where you're looking out the front. It usually never looks anything like you anticipated. Thomas Edison said it well. Opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and it looks like work. So I start with this statement. It's never the situation, but what you choose to do in a situation that will make all the difference for you. Pay attention to the people you meet along the way, even if they don't appear to have much to contribute. Never look down on anybody unless you're helping them up. Their words, either positive or negative, can have an Im a huge impact on you, your view of the world, and how you go forward in life. In high school, I was told by my counselor, college should not be considered. I did not have the mental horsepower to be college material. It took a long time to realize that what he said was only from his perspective and training. Years later, he took a college business class for me and earned a C. How interesting. <laughs> and it wasn't payback. <laughs> he earned it. <laughs> After high school, I went to a community college for one year. I was always looking over my shoulder, waiting for college officials to boot me out. I decided I needed to grow up. I volunteered for the draft and went into the Army. In, in the military, in basic training, I was pulled from training and told I had very high scores in leadership and was invited to join the Officers Candidate School program, or OCS. It was a one-year program, and I would, have to come, I would have come out as a second lieutenant. My first thoughts were, they mixed up my score with someone else, and there is no way a guy who can't go to college could be selected for OCS. I turned it down. Later, when I was in advanced training, I was again pulled out of training and asked to go to non-commissioned officer's school because of my test scores. Again, I said thanks, but no thanks. I did not want to be humiliated. In Vietnam, I turned 20 and was assigned as a squad leader on an open turreted tank, primarily because my training instructors put in my record that I had strong leadership skill sets. I accepted this position and thrived. For the first time, I got an inkling that maybe I had the ability to learn. I just learned differently. I was good at tactics, had sound instincts, and enjoyed working with the team as a leader. I got hit several times in Nam and spent a year in the Minneapolis VA hospital after being discharged from the Army. It was a tough year. What made it challenging, besides the healing process, was that the injuries closed doors for me. Before the military, I had been a Sears appliance repairman, and I was really good at fixing things. I loved that job. Because of my injuries, I was told by the HR folks in Sears that I could no longer be a repairman, and to get ahead, I had to go to get a college degree. My Sears repairman career was over. Remember, opportunities always seem to come to the back door while you're looking out the front, and they usually never look anything like you anticipated. I went to college. My high school counselor's word came back to me. How could I go to school when I was not capable of learning? Luckily, I didn't know about or accept the notion of disability when I could, work, when I could walk and work, 
So I came to the conclusion, it's never the situation, but what I choose to do in that situation, that'll make a difference. I went to work full time, got married, had a family, and took classes at night. I went to college on the VA Veterans Volk Rehab Program, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. In my freshman and sophomore years, I learned how to study, and although I received no A's and got an occasional B, I learned what I wanted. In my early college years, a math professor took me aside. I was really struggling. And he said, you are more than capable, but you are psyching yourself out with your fear of failure. He showed me how to overcome me. It worked. By the age of 25, I realized that I could learn. In fact, I discovered that I was pretty smart. I just did not fit educational evaluation models of that time. Later, I took upper, upper division small business courses and thrived in the topic. I discovered that most entrepreneurs have flunked at least one course, were CB students, and had been fired from at least one job. Check, check, and check. I found my niche. <laughs> As I was finishing my undergraduate, another professor in a non-business course suggested I go into the executive MBA program. He liked my ability to reason and solve problems. He said he would write a letter of support for me. I was stunned but decided to stifle my fear of being rejected and try to get in. I was led into the program on a very strict probational trial. My last years as an undergraduate in the business program had really helped me focus and I significantly improved my grades, mostly Bs with an occasional A. The business faculty supported giving me a chance at graduate school. I knew once in the MBA program, I would complete the program. I proved myself and earned my MBA. Samuel Goldwyn put it this way, the harder I work, the luckier I get. At 29, I was asked to become the first director of the Small Business Development Center um, in Minnesota, and I would run a center at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul. I had no political connections, did not come from wealth or an influential family, but I had strong recommendations from individuals that believed in me. One year later, I was appointed as the state director for the Minnesota SBDC with nine centers, and later we expanded to 13 on the same budget. The team uh, my team turned the program into a model that the SBA encouraged other states to use to set up their new state programs. Today, SBDCs are in every, straight, uh, every state, and I can smile because I was there at the beginning. My fingerprints are still on a very successful national program that helps small business. Soon after I started as the NBDC, Minnesota Small Business Development State Director, I was invited to a lunch by a board member. Mr. Ron Hubbs, who was the founder of St. Paul Companies, one of the largest insurance companies at the time. He was 83 and still went to work every day. He invited me to lunch at the exclusive St. Paul Club where all the top business executives met. I was in awe and very nervous. Mr. Hubbs was very gracious and asked me about me. I was honest and the first thing out of my mouth was, you know, I was not really that a very good student. Mr. Hubbs held out his hand and he stopped me and said, an academic institution must never forget to honor the A student for one day they will write great things about the college. But an academic institution must never ever forget to honor the C student for one day they will donate the building. <laughs> now, he concluded with, I don't care about your grades. You were hired in this position because people think you are the man for the job. Unless you prove us wrong, we are here to support you. I assured him I would not let him down and I never did. There are so many other wonderful individuals that showed up at my back door while I was looking out the front for an opportunity. I'm glad I answered the knock and took time to consider a prospect even if it looked nothing like I'd managed. The strange twists and turns in my life have given me the most amazing adventure, one I could have never dreamed on my own. And so it is with you. Be proud of and honor your academic accomplishments. They are indeed noteworthy. But please remember that the world has plenty of educated individuals that never really apply what they learn. Use your education as a stepping stone for your future growth. It is what you do every day in every situation that will show the world who you are and what you stand for. 
every day, in every way, your job is to show up, pay attention, and always perform at your highest and your best. I can only speak from the world of business, but most businesses are not as concerned with your academic GPA as with your potential to develop and show a strong work ethic, personal integrity, that you can follow instructions, you can take the initiative, and you have leadership potential. You all have capabilities. Let them out and make it happen. Dare to be great and find your niche. Whether you got an Ivy Day Award today or not, awards will come with hard work and persistence. Blessings to you for your success in life, family, and your careers. Again, congratulations to all Ivy Day recipients on your wonderful accomplishment. It has been my honor to speak with you this evening. And remember, it's never the situation, but what you choose to do in a situation that will make all the difference. Thank you and have a great evening.